Hello and welcome to Mr. Tompkins EdTech and my series, A Teacher's Guide to Microsoft Excel. In this video, we're going to be looking at tip two, the VLOOKUP function, which is a very powerful tool for combining two data sets together. If you missed the series intro and tip one on naming ranges, you might like to go and watch these videos first, which will explain a bit more about the series and will tell you where you can download the Excel workbook that accompanies this series. If you've already done that, then let's get started. Now, Microsoft have recently added a new function called XLOOKUP, which in some ways is more versatile than the older VLOOKUP function, and we will be looking at this in depth in the next video in this series. However, I still think that VLOOKUP is a handy function to know in its own right, and you'll also find it in lots of older spreadsheets that were designed and built before Office 2019 came along. So let's take a look at what it does. In the last video, we named this table of information as students. So now if we type students into the name box up here, then you can see that Excel's focus jumps onto this table. Notice that the first column of the table is called ADNO and contains a number. Now ADNO is short for admission number and my school uses this number to uniquely identify students at the school. Students are assigned this number when they first arrive at school and will hang on to it until they leave. Imagine you wanted to know the name of the student with an ADNO of 1003. Now if I asked you to do it, you would most likely scan down the first column until you found the number 1003, then you would read across to the name column and there would be your answer, buzz. Now VLOOKUP function does exactly the same thing. If I type in equals VLOOKUP open brackets 1003 comma students comma two comma false, Excel returns the value buzz. Now let's break that function down. This function needs four input values, equals VLOOKUP, open brackets, then the first value is the value to find, next comes the range containing that value, third column to read off, and finally there is a true or false flag, which I'll explain a bit more in a moment. So the first was the value you're looking up, and in this example, it's the number 1003. The second value is the data range containing the information we are looking up. In this case, the named range students that we already defined in the last video. The third value is the column we want to read across to. So here the names are stored in the second column of the student's data, data range, hence the value two. The fourth and last input value needs to be either true or false. This true false flag indicates whether you want an exact match, which is false, or the closest match, which is true. Mostly for students' data, we want an exact match, so usually we're going to be using false. Let's try a few more examples. If I want the tutor group of student 1002, tutor group is the fifth column, so that's going to be equals VLOOKUP 1002, comma students, comma 5, comma false. If I want the gender of student 1003, gender is the fourth column, so that's equals VLOOKUP open brackets 1003, comma students, comma 4, comma false. Now, instead of an actual lookup value, you can include a cell reference. So if I want to look up the surname of the student ID stored in cell B14, then that's equals VLOOKUP open brackets B14, comma students, comma three, comma false. Now it can be very useful to write them with a cell reference like this because you can then use the fill down feature to copy a similar formula into the cells below. So if I select J14 and then drag down this little square in the bottom right corner of the cell marker, it's going to copy that same formula into the cell below but notice it changes B14 to B15 and returns the value in boots. This is an example of what's called a relative cell reference. When Excel copies a formula from one place to another, then any cell reference in the formula gets changed depending on how many rows or columns you've moved it by. We've copied it one row down, so the row reference is changed by one row, B14 to B15. Okay, it's time for you to practice this a little bit before we carry on. So pause the video now and open the accompanying workbook link down below. An open worksheet tip 2 VLOOKUP and complete task 2A. 
Once you finish with the task, come back and press play again. Okay, welcome back. If you've managed to get these results for task 2A, good job. If not, have another go. And once you're done, remember to tick the little box below to indicate you have finished the task and that we're ready to move on. Now I mentioned that this ADNO is a unique student identifier used in our school. Most reports and data sheets that the school creates on students will usually include this code somewhere and usually it's at the front of the data sheet. Now this is extremely useful as it means you can merge data from one or more of these various reports into your own gradebook using the VLOOKUP function as long as you too include this same unique identifier in your own gradebook. So I'm going to show you how to do this. This second table here I've already named progress so if I select progress from the name box pull down list it's going to refocus Excel onto this table. So now I have two named ranges students and progress and notice that both tables have the ADNO included as their first column. Now I'm going to make a new table that brings together data from both the students table and the progress table. I've started off by listing all the ADNOs in the first column. I could just copy paste this over from either of the tables. Now the rest of the information I'm going to generate with VLOOKUPs. Okay, let's go. First up, surname. Now surname is in the third column of the students table. So here I'm going to type equals VLOOKUP open bracket D49 students 3 false. And you can see once I press enter, that's given me the value duck. Next column is the name. Now that's the second column of the students table. So let's type equals VLOOKUP open brackets D49 students 2 false. The 2018 data is in the second column of the progress table, so equals VLOOKUP open brackets D49 comma progress comma 2 comma false. Similarly 2019 and 2020 are in the third and the fourth column, uh, so that's just equals VLOOKUP open brackets D49 comma progress comma 3 comma false and equals VLOOKUP open brackets D49 comma progress comma 4 comma false. Okay, now because I used relative cell references for each of the formula I entered here, I can simply select the whole first row and then use this little square on the bottom right of the selected range and drag that down to fill this formula to the bottom of the table. And voila, we have the completed table with data pulled in from two separate spreadsheets or tables. And this is the real power of the VLOOKUP function. It makes it really quick to pull data together from two separate spreadsheets. It's also doing this very reliably. If you've ever tried to merge data together from two spreadsheets manually by cutting and pasting, nearly always there's something that goes wrong because the students were in the wrong order or you've lost one or gained one from somewhere or other and you end up having to work out where it all went wonky and try and put it right. With VLOOKUP you don't have to worry about this, it's going to look every value up precisely. If it does struggle to find what it's looking for, for example because you asked it to look up a value that doesn't actually exist, you will get this NA error which stands for not available. I'll show you how you can deal with these sorts of errors in tip 9 later in the series. For now I'd like you to go and complete task 2B in the accompanying workbook where you need to pull data together from three different tables, the students, behavior and progress tables. So pause this video and go and do that now. Once you're done, come back and press play again and we'll check the results and wrap things up. Okay, hopefully you managed to complete the first row and then successfully used fill down to fill in the rest of the table. So it should now look something like this. If not, have another go. Once you're done, remember to tick the box below to indicate you have finished this task. So I hope these two tasks help you to understand the VLOOKUP function and gain an appreciation of how useful it can be to bring in data from another spreadsheet into your gradebook. Now I mentioned before that combining data this way is a lot more reliable than trying to cut paste data 
from one book to another. Now the other major benefit is that if I now go back to one of those tables I used in my VLOOKUP formula, so for example, maybe I've realized I've spelt Puss's surname incorrectly, and I go back and add a hyphen, then that change is automatically going to update across any other cells that are looking up data from it. So you can see it's also changed here and down here too, without me having to do anything extra. So for a casual user of VLOOKUPs, that's all you really need to know about it. But for more advanced users, if you're using VLOOKUPs to pull in data into your gradebook from one or more data tables stored in different workbooks, then listen to this next bit carefully. If the original data resides in a different workbook, Excel will still try to maintain the links between these two workbooks. So if you change a value in a table in workbook A, then your VLOOKUP formula in workbook B that uses that table will also update. When you open workbook B, you may get a pop-up asking whether or not you want to update your links. So saying yes here will check any VLOOKUPs you have and update them from the source if there have been any changes. If you say no, it's going to keep the existing values it had the last time you opened it. Now you can go to the data ribbon and open edit links to see all your workbook's existing links and manage these connections. Update values will go check for updates and change any cells necessary. Change source allows you to point the link at a different workbook so maybe if you've changed the name of the source or you saved a newer version with a different name, you can point the link at this new file instead. Break link replaces any dynamic links with static data. So if I break the link to workbook A, then my VLOOKUP formula in workbook B is going to be replaced with the value it had at the time the link was broken. This can be useful to do if you know that you're not ever going to update the source file, so it's not worth Excel trying to maintain this link. So best to break these links and replace your dynamic VLOOKUP formulas with their static values. I hope that makes sense. Okay, so we now know how to create a VLOOKUP formula to pull in data from another table which can be somewhere else in our workbook or in an entirely different workbook. We've talked about the importance of including a unique student identifier, which is commonly used in your school to enable you to do this accurately. We've looked at using relative cell references to quickly fill down these formulas to populate our entire gradebook with the data from another table in another spreadsheet. Finally, we took a quick look at the edit links tool used to maintain these links with other workbooks. In the next video, I'll be taking a look at using Excel to convert between things like levels, marks and grades. We'll be taking a look at the brand new XLOOKUP function and how it differs from VLOOKUP and when we might want to use it instead. If you like this video, please do let me know by clicking on the like button below. Also, why not subscribe, which just means that YouTube is going to be a little bit more likely to recommend my videos to you in future. Click over here to start the next video in this Excel series or click on the thumbnail below it for the full series playlist. You might also like this other great EdTech tutorial down here. See you on the next video.